Well, got them early. Let's unbox the brand new iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let's do this. So this is the box for the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max and this for the iPhone 15 Pro. Now similar boxes to last year's iPhone 14 Pro Max, but obviously we've got newer wallpapers on the front. Right, let's get into the iPhone 15 Pro Max box first. This is the one that I think most people have been really excited about. Wow, look at that. So this is in the natural titanium. I mean, I saw this at the hands-on after the keynote, but boxing this, that looks really, really nice. Right, let's do the same for the iPhone 15 Pro. Again, I think this color is also gonna be very, very popular. Wow, look at that. So this is the titanium blue color. The iPhone 15 Pro in this blue titanium actually reminds me a little of last year's deep purple, similar, but obviously this one is more blue in color. Right, so there they are side by side. Let's just pull the iPhone 15 Pro Max out. I really like this color and show you what we get inside the box. So to begin with, looks like, wow, that's less than I was expecting. So we just get the SIM injector tool and a single Apple sticker, no more the rest of the paperwork that normally comes in this. And then this year they announced a change to USB-C. So we get a brand new USB-C to USB-C cable. And this is a braided cable that should hopefully last longer this time around. And with the iPhone 15 Pro, we get exactly the same in the box. Let's pull back the plastic. Ready? Oh, it doesn't make that familiar noise. Wow, these feel so incredibly light. And the natural titanium, just look at that. It's interesting because in different lighting, you can mistake this for the white titanium, but it does have this very unique, very lustrous look in other lighting. Certainly looks and reminds me of titanium itself or a metallic of that sort. So this year's iPhone 15 Pro lineup get the titanium treatment. So that means it's gonna be durable, but also noticeably light in the hand. When I compare this with the last year's 14 Pro Max, the 15 Pro Max is certainly much, much more lighter, but I'd say also more comfortable. And that's because there's been some refinements done by Apple on the design element. So this edge now is much more tapered and curved than last year's uh, 14 Pro Max. It's this I used to notice this in the hand and feel it. It was almost like edgy and it would hurt on occasions if you're holding it for a long time. But on the newer 15 Pro Max, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's slightly tapered around the frame on the edge, as well as slightly on the glass and it certainly feels lighter and it's gonna be easier to hold for longer periods of time, particularly with the 15 Pro Max in this larger 6.7 inch size. Now, one of the comment that was made was about the size of the bezel. So I don't know if you can tell here, but the bezels on the newer 15 Pro Max is just slightly, slightly thinner. Now, Mother Nature has been expecting changes at Apple. And one of the changes they made this year is to the leather cases. So we no longer get leather cases. Apple have opted for something called fine woven. I've got two of them to show you, one for the iPhone 15 Pro and the other for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So it's really hard to describe this material. It kind of feels like suede, but it doesn't. It also feels like really premium fabric material, if that makes sense. And then on the back over here, you've got similar material. What is interesting is I thought that the sides over here were actually plastic, but on closer inspection, it actually looks like it's the same material, but like a, a, a much tighter version of that material. So it almost gives it a stronger feel. And then for the buttons, we have metallic buttons that are used over there. This particular color looks like a brown gray color, but it's actually taupe. And this color here is Pacific blue. What do you guys think? This year's iPhone 15 wallpapers lack luster. So I've updated mine to this new cool monochromatic wallpaper pack. There are a bunch of different wallpapers and the link will be in the bio so you can go check that out. But there have been a few changes to the design outside of just titanium. Number one, most noticeable is down there at the bottom, we get USB-C with on the pro models, the capability of USB-C 3.0, but you do need a separate cable for this, but that's gonna be really helpful for any of you that wanna film uh, or take photos uh, to an external uh, device, you're now able to do that. One other update is now we get a brand new action button on the side. So no longer the mute switch, it is the action button. What is interesting here though, is in the settings, there is 
an option with a really cool graphic of where you can customize this. So these are all the options that you have for the uh, action button. I've got mine set for camera and within camera, you can actually select which function of the camera. So I have mine on video, but after a couple of days of using it, what I'm noticing is, is I'm not kind of using it as much as I thought I would. In fact, I kind of feel like taking it back to the mute switch. By the way, if you do change that from the default mute, you basically have an option now to either mute and unmute. So it's not like it's gonna be difficult to get to, but it's just an extra step if you change that action button to something other than mute. Well, there's a bunch of changes on the outside. There's also been crucial changes on the inside, including what Apple have done to the camera, but I'll talk to you about that after you hit that subscribe button before actually I talk about the camera. Let's just take a moment to touch on one of the other big changes internally, and that is this brand new A17 Pro chip. So Apple teased this off for the first time, at the keynote and i think this is actually a bigger deal than most people might assume yes it's a three nanometer chip yes it is supposed to be faster in certain areas like two times faster when it comes to the neural engine most people will not notice a major difference when it comes to day-to-day -day use between let's say this year's iphone 15 pro and last year's iphone 14 pro where it shines and where i think a lot of other brands need to kind of sit up and take notice is when it comes to gaming because the GPU capabilities on the A17 Pro are phenomenal. I've been testing this out with an early release of Resident Evil 4. These are console level gaming that is coming to the iPhone 15 Pro and playing around with Resident Evil 4, I was completely blown away by some of the details, particularly around ray tracing. Now, if you're not familiar with ray tracing, this is the concept of how light is kind of projected on these games. It basically gives you a more realistic view of gameplay. This is stuff that you would get on a fully fledged console now coming to a handheld device this is insane, particularly if you are a gamer, you'll know what a big deal this is. And hopefully when more of these console games do get released officially near the end of this year and early next year, I think this is gonna be a major, major plus point for the iPhone 15 Pro models. All right, let's talk cameras. So this year, Apple have done some differentiation between their Pro models. So the iPhone 15 Pro has a slightly different camera than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now I have a theory as to why they might have done this. I'll share that with you in a second. But essentially, both of these have the main 48 megapixel sensor and there have been changes through the photonic engine to make improvements to things like low light photography, portrait, cinematic on both of these devices. But where the Pro Max has a slight advantage is when it comes to the zoom capability or focal lens. So essentially on the iPhone 15 Pro, you get ultra wide going up all the way to 3X or ultra wide going up all the way to 77 millimeter focal length. Whereas on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you get ultra wide going up all the way to 120 millimeter focal length. So essentially 5X zoom. Now, I think the reason why they've done that on the Pro Max and not on the Pro model is essentially the technology that they're using to get that additional sort of focal length. And that is something called a Tetra Prism. Essentially, it's a slightly larger area required to put that into the camera module, but they're using that alongside stabilization. So you're getting incredible stabilization up to 10,000 micro adjustments per second to make sure that those additional zoom photography, videography, uh, doesn't become subject to crazy shakiness. So you're getting smooth, but good quality zoom at that additional 120 millimeter focal length. So essentially on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, they're pitching this as an iPhone with seven different lenses. Think about it more like seven different focal lengths. Ultra wide, 1X, and then within 1X you have 24 millimeter, you have 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, then you have the 2X, and then 5X, which goes all the way up to that 120 millimeter focal length. That there really is the difference between the two cameras. Right here is video. Now, traditionally iPhone video, in my opinion, has been some of the best. On the 15 Pro models, it just gets better in the sense that now we have currently ultra wide on the Pro Max that can zoom up to 5X for optical zoom, particularly in video. Now, currently I'm filming 4K 30 frames per second, but this will film 
in 60 frames per second. I'm in ultra wide right now. This is 1x, this is 2x, and now this is 5x. So it's pretty nice and consistent there. This will go all the way up to 15x, which then starts getting into digital zoom, but it does a good job with stabilization. Even at that 5x, I feel like the stabilization now with the OIS and uh, further stabilization there is a good indicator of how this will perform with video. Right, so this is what video looks like with the true depth front facing camera. I have a bit of an issue here, if I'm honest, and that is, I feel like Apple could have introduced an ultra wide here because a lot of people increasingly, like myself, are using the front facing and rear facing cameras for content creation. And this seems to be stuck when you compare it with the likes of what other flagship manufacturers are doing with like uh, Huawei, Honor, a few others, having an ultra wide on the front facing camera would completely just improve how video and also photography could be used with that true depth camera. So hopefully, hopefully we get that next year. 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max also come with Wi-Fi 6E and the second gen ultra wideband chip, which is gonna allow you to find other people with the iPhone 15 series. Think about precision finding the four air tags, but now for other human beings should make life a little more easier if you're trapped in a crowded place. But let's talk about the battery life. So I've been using this for a couple of days. Last year's iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, there were a lot of people that noticed the battery life, completely dipped, myself included. Now it's too soon for me to comment on that and I will report back in a longer form review once I've had a bit more time with the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro Max. But let me just say this, hopefully there should be an improvement in the battery life overall. One with optimizations with iOS 17, but also with this three nanometer chipset. Typically, the smaller the nanometer, the more efficient the uh, power drain is on the device. So hopefully, hopefully, this year's iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max should give us better battery life. I was gonna say slightly, it'll probably be slightly better battery life, but hopefully better overall battery life than last year's iPhone 14 Pro, but do stay tuned and I will give you an update on that. And as a wrap, that's the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iPhone 15 Pro. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And if you need some help choosing between which color iPhone 15 Pro you should go for, I've got a really useful video. It's hit over 2 million views. So check that out over here. That should make your life easier. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video here on MQuan Reviews.